Welcome to Diddy Gate here on Popcorn Planet. We are live. I'm here with John Witherspoon, attorney at law, and it's Kim. And man, this was a intense stream. Uh, if you want to watch the full rundown of this recent complaint from uh, Grace, the accuser against Christian King Combs, Sean's son, I implore you to go become a member over on Patreon. You'll be able to watch the full stream. We read through it with analysis. I wanted to give you guys a recap and talk about the most important bit, which shocked us as we read it, which is this transcript, guys. So there's a transcript in this. Now, just overall recap, uh, this plaintiff, Grace, is accusing, again, these are charges in a civil suit, charging against Christian Combs, Sean's uh, Combs, Diddy's son, as well as Sean for aiding and abetting for all of these charges that you can see here, um, demanding a jury trial. Now, again, a lot of stuff in here, it's hard to know. We weren't there. These are allegations. We want to take them seriously. There are some things here that are interesting. They chose a photo from the raid to, to show who Christian is. The fact that there's photos in general. There's some stuff in here that's interesting. This is the same attorney who put together the little Rodney case, who has had people had some questions over his, uh, you know, is he doing this for settlements or real? But all that goes out the window, and I think it did for all of us when we got to this alleged transcript. If you go to this page, and I'm going specifically to it because to me it's the most important thing to focus on because let me reiterate, if this is real, if this audio is real and exists, which apparently they've played for NBC News, who uh, mentioned a couple quotes from it, seeing it for the first time here, it's an entirety. If this is real, man, this Christian guy is in a hell of a lot of trouble. I don't see how you get away from this. No is no. And it's very clear how uncomfortable this woman felt and reading it together. I'm, I'm a warning, trigger warning to everybody before we get there. This is definitely, as our chat was uh, acknowledging, is not a good, easy read. Um, but I want to read it again just so we're all very clear on, again, if this is real, which they claim to have, this is recorded in the studio where Rodney, little Rod, was working. He was a very, apparently he's needing to be there 24 hours on the yacht because, you know, Diddy's so rich. He's got his own professional recording studio on his yacht to record at any hours of the day if he wants to. And Christian allegedly came to the yacht late at night, apparently on some sort of substances. Little Rod was there, and apparently Little Rod recorded everything. And there are now allegedly audio clips. Again, NBC News has said they heard the audio clips. I've reached out to Tyrone Blackburn, trying to see if we can get a hold, or at least we can hear to verify them ourselves, ourselves as well. Stay tuned. In the meanwhile, the uh, suit, which just dropped the complaint, thanks to uh, uh, John here, we were able to get it ahead of everybody else, uh, has this transcript, which is the first I've, we've seen it, and it's pretty damning. So let's go through um, this transcript, and I'm gonna have some questions to John on the overall suit and how this compares to the little Rodney case. Is it more serious? Before we get there, here is the transcript. So alleged audio, number one, defendant, Christian Combs. Yo, it's shot o'clock. Plaintiff, Grace, no, I'm not doing shots, Christian. Defendant, Christian Combs, everybody, we got to take a shot. Audio two, plaintiff, I'll just put the ledge. Uh, that's that's Grace. Defendant, uh, Christian, no, 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 take the whole thing. Plaintiff, no, you will take it as well. Christian, take the whole shot. Plaintiff, I'm only doing it as long as you take it as well. Christian, I'm, I ain't going to lie. I'm not taking nothing. Please, please, please take the shot. You are drugging me, plaintiff says. Christian, take the shot. Hey, yo, play another beat one time because now uh, it's interesting. Why not give the whole audio? I, it bugs me, but still enough in here is, is strange. But I don't know why it's cut, but apparently then cuts. And then we hear uh, Cassie's Me and You featuring P. Diddy and Young Jock playing in the background as then this S.A happens on the plaintiff. Cassie, this is not an offer. Christian, you said what? Plaintiff, I can't. I'm swapping out. I can't do it. I'm sorry, darling. Christian, no, we need you. Plaintiff, I'm going to stop. Stop. I have to go. I have to go. Honestly, I'm like already losing sleep. I have to go now. Now, it's important just to, to remind everybody, she's been doing the 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift. This is at the end of her shift. She is there to take care of her A-list clients on this yacht. That's what the job is. The bosses, everybody need to apply. Make sure that these A-list clients are doing well. Her client is Sean Combs and now Sean Combs' son. And she's being pressured into this to stay, to drink, to do all this stuff. She's trying to get out of the room. Uh, you're the best one on this ship, though, Christian says. What do you mean? She responds. Christian, who's going to replace you? Who's going to replace me? Defendant Christian, F that. 
That's going to be trash, though. You feel me? Plaintiff, excuse me, you don't touch my legs like that. I'll move my legs where I want to. Plaintiff, if I want to do this, then I will. You don't touch, uh, sorry, then I will. You don't touch my legs like that, says uh, Grace. Christian, listen, you and everybody in the crew, it's great. Plaintiff, Grace, I can't. I have to go down. I have to go down. Christian, no. Yo, tell me, listen. Grace, what? Christian, like you're just vibing with me the whole time. Like, just say it. Plaintiff, I can't. I promise you, I wish I could, but I can't, unless I say that you guys requested me. Defendant Christian, yes, who can I talk to right now? Who can I talk to? I'm going to say I requested you right now. Plaintiff, well, you can take your hand off my ass for the first thing. Now, again, I, I don't know if there's more audio, why it's selective. Maybe these are the most important parts, and then it, it, it ends. But either, even so, these clips are hard to justify. There's and I no will say, reason- Andy- Go ahead, Kim. So I hate to interrupt you, but I feel like point 60 is very important there as well. Um, when she's saying you'd have to request me, that clarifies in the lawsuit as well that she knew that anyone of authority who would have been able to approve her to stay would have been sleeping, so no one would have approved it. So for her saying that was not a, yeah, ask if I can stay. It was a trying to find a polite way to exit the situation, knowing that there would not be that response. Yeah, hundred percent. Thank you. I, I mean, I, I want to get there because all of this is that, which is her boss. And we even talked about on the on the on the show, the live. If you want to watch the full show, we had a very nice dialogue because the jury. I mean, sorry, the jury. The um, the lawyers are going to try to tell the jury. Well, she drank. She shouldn't have drank. All these things are going to come into play. The reality, though, is this is her boss. She's at work. This is so much more complicated, guys, and not fair to put her in such a situation to begin with. Uh, she shouldn't have to feel pressured to take a shot. You shouldn't have to buy the A-list client. This is all very bad looking for the Combs family. Uh, and if this audio is real, uh, how many more times does he have to say, does she have to say stop and no to, for him to get the hint? And it does seem like he's probably intoxicated. That's not a good excuse. Sorry, it's not. Uh, and so the reality is this is really damning, if true, and horrifying. And the rest of this case goes into more details as to what allegedly happened. He apparently then uh, accosted her in a movie theater, Afterwards, removed his clothing and attempted to fully SA. Um, and uh, there was bruising on her arm, which there are pictures of in the full suit, which I can't show you here because I'm trying to keep this not, uh, you know, limited for YouTube's sake. I want to share all this because this, and I want to get to the panel now. This is some damning, damning stuff. Because again, there's always accusations, but when you get audio like this, clear as day, John, this can't help this civil case for Christian and Sean Kennett? Well, if it is clear of day, clear as day, and that's 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 not an automatic, uh, that's not a given, um, you know, uh, w until we actually hear the audio, um, there are any number of ways to, to potentially attack this dialogue that's been portrayed here and that, and that has been alleged to have taken place. Um, the audio might not be clear. There might not be, uh, a, you know, a, a bulletproof, um, uh, you know, way of identifying who is doing the speaking and, you know, and exactly what they're saying and so forth. And um, it gets all back to the question of authentication, where if this is played in court or even before it's played in court, somebody's going to have to identify what was the source of this information, who made the recording, who has kept it between the time it was made and the time it's played in court. Um, you know, how do we authenticate and how do we prove that the person who's alleged to be speaking is actually the person who is speaking? All these kinds of things all have to be hashed out in court. At the end of the day, though, um, the jury, presuming I believe there's a jury demand in this case, uh, it's going to be a jury who sits and says, hey, we believe that this, these are the actual people that, that are alleged to be on this recording. Um, we believe that this did actually take place. It's not AI. It's not any other kind of, you know, manipulation. Um, and uh, taken within the totality of all the circumstances and the totality of the evidence, we think it's more likely than not that this actually took place. And therefore, um, we, we're going to give a win to the plaintiff in, in this case, this woman who has brought the lawsuit. So um, it, it's not an automatic by any stretch of, of imagination, but um, if it well, can be authenticated. Let's assume it gets through that vetting. 
if this yeah. is real audio, not a good look for Christian in a, in eyes. No, of absolutely not. Absolutely not. If if it if it passes the sniff test, then it's potentially very very problematic. You're absolutely right. And and the rest of this case, you know, we don't have as much evidence. It's going to be a he said she said. But this type of audit damning audio, as Kim, you've said it before, in a civil case, right? It's only fifty one percent need to to agree. And I would imagine, Kim, your thoughts in, in reading this transcript now, because we've only seen sort of snippets through NBC, but in reading this transcript now, this is pretty hard to come back from if it's real, right? Yes, I would agree. I mean, if the question is, was she touched without her consent? And, you know, did she voice that she did not want to be touched in that manner? If this this audio is authenticated, it's pretty clear that, no, she did not want this interaction. This is SA, period. And it's really sad that, oh, the, the whole situation of this is you read through the entire lawsuit and you kind of see the, um, the environment that she was placed in and how she was set up in this, this place where she was probably terrified to say anything. And the end of it all, it, based on the lawsuit, it does sound like she did lose her job. She, it impacted her personal life, her relationship, her family life, everything. She lost so much because of this incident, if all of this is to be true. So I'm, I mean, I really hope that if this all is true, that the audio can be authenticated because I think it's going to be crucial in her case. And just for full, so I want to re go visit. Audio was recorded by Jones, allegedly. NBC News has heard two clips of audio transcribed in the suit, purposely from the night, but has not verified who was recorded, which is important, as John said. Again, we need to vet this. It will need to go through that sort of way, legitimizing it. But um, there allegedly is audio that's claiming to be this. And it's interesting there as I go back and read that, only two. They only heard two, and there are... Uh, I guess it well, is there two. Are the it's, two. It's one and then the longer one. Okay, got it. So there's only the two. So they've heard it. This audio apparently exists. I would, Mr. Blackburn, share it more. What's going on? If you're giving to one press outlet, give it to other press outlets because if this is real, we need to get the word out. If it's not, why are you sharing it? Or, you know, if it's private, why are you sharing it with certain outlets? Um, I hope they do so we can definitively figure out is this real or not? Because I think it's important information to know. So Diddy's lawyer slammed this lawsuit against Sun, expected to say the same kind of manufactured lies. Youngest Sun Christian slams the lawyers behind slammed it. Again, they're going after Tyrone Blackburn. And I want to connect that because the last suit was kind of sloppy at times. Is that going to affect this? Do you think this one plays better because it's got the transcript and in, in board? Or is there a version of this where uh, this could be a shakedown by uh, this Blackburn attorney who has had previous grievances. Does any of that come into play for you, John? Well, I, I, I'm assuming that he's he's gotten a little bit sharper and a little bit smarter since he filed the, the case in New York, um, the, the Little Rod case. I mean, and and that was a little unusual. All of a sudden, you know, he, he's he's had to go back several times um, and file a First Amendment, com file a complaint, then file a First Amendment complaint, uh, first amended complaint, uh, then a second amended complaint, which uh, somewhere along the line, there was one or more procedural problems where you, you typically have to ask the court for leave or permission to file an amended complaint. Apparently, that was not done in the way that the court expected it to be done. Most courts have their, you know, their federal rules of civil procedure, and then there are usually some local rules as well. Somehow he managed to uh, run afoul of those rules in terms of asking the court to to file a, uh, an amended complaint and so forth, and and the reason he was filing amended complaints, I mean, for instance, the the, the first, uh, I think it was the first amended complaint had 72 pages, did not mention Cuban Good, Cuba Gooding Jr. as I recall. Second amended amended complaint that he tried to file uh, was up close to 100 pages, 90 or 100 pages, and all of a sudden it did include Cuba Gooding Jr. And you got to ask yourself, well, well, you know, why, how did Cuba Gooding Jr. get left out of the the original complaint and the first amended complaint? Um, or, you know, it, it, how did how did someone that important to the case not get included the first time you went through the exercise? It just is a little bit of a question um, that, you know, there might there might be, for all I know, there might be a perfectly legitimate reason, but at the same time, it just it's it's a little bit odd. 
Yeah, but. speaking of odd and speaking of Cuba Cooney Jr., again, like here's that portion I found of according to plaintiff, defendant Combs chartered a yacht, witnessed several A-listers on board, including rappers Redacted, 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 as well as Redacted and Cuba Cooney Jr. And then they go on to talk, how you, talk about how unpleasant he was. And then if you go down to the little uh, footnotes, the, they're like giving little clues and Easter eggs as to who the Redacted people are, a Philadelphia rapper, a third. Anyway, it's all very strange to me. So there is still a little bit of a messiness to this lawsuit, you would say, it seems, as we were going through this. The the real meat of this is clearly that transcript, no? Well, uh, yeah, for our for our purposes right now, um, the, the, the transcript is uh, has got a lot of shock value and a lot of splash value to it. It, it. It's certainly something, I mean, as you said, NBC picked up on it and they actually had heard some parts of it. Um, and to a certain extent um it, it's appropriate to have that stuff in there to a certain extent it's like okay well how much how, how much is that really moving the ball with respect to getting this case off the ground which is the stage that it's at right now um you know the level of detail i i think is 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 a little bit much because um normally the the audio recording and the transcript and all of that kind of thing would be brought up um, in a deposition before trial or at, during the trial itself. Again, if it can be authenticated and so forth. So it it, it it's a little bit overkill in this in the same way that the pictures are a little bit overkill. Yeah. Um, normally, if you have a if if you've got a solid case that you just want to move forward with and you know and get the ball rolling, you know, there's plenty of time and opportunity to bring up those pictures later on. So putting them in the you know the initial uh, filing like this is, you know, it's interesting, but um, it 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 does kind of make you scratch your head and say, well, you know, what what are we trying to accomplish here? And again, and to your point, specifically, this like we're picking the photo from a week ago with the raid to make him look even more incriminating. There's definitely something odd to right. it. Kim, what was your overall take on this read? I mean, did, how how did it read compared to the other uh, little rod case by the same attorney? I think there was definitely some stuff in here that I would consider to be petty. For example, towards the beginning of the lawsuit, there was the mention that um, Christian Combs uh, uses auto-tune and is heavily edited in his music, which I didn't really, I mean, to the, I was, I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt in the sense of like, by the time we get to the end of the lawsuit, maybe that would be relevant. Maybe there would be a reason that that would be in there. I I didn't see it. I don't know if either of you gentlemen did, but I personally did not. Um, no, it's and super I mean, petty. <laughs> yeah, and I I don't see a lot of lawsuits that have like the photos the way that the ones I've seen from this attorney, like the way that he uses mm -hmm. them. Um, but I mean, it's I like don't know if that's a, yeah, I don't know if that's wrong. I don't know if that's a bad thing how that's looked at. Um, and I'm sure there are some lawyers that that's their style. And I mean, fair enough. We've all got to do, you know, what feels right for us and what helps us get our point across. But I do think that in particular. If this tape is real, if that tape can be authenticated, I think, I mean, that's what this is about. That's the big thing. Everything else to me is just noise. It's, did this real, if this happened, did it happen this way? Is this real? Then she is entitled. I I believe she's entitled to compensation. That's my opinion. If I was on that jury and I heard that audio and it was authenticated, I would vote guilty. Done so fast yeah, it, it it's true because it's not it's not like he's facing criminal charges it's a civil case it's a little easier and yeah, yeah that that if that audio is authenticated it's it's not a good look um it's not a good look at all and so it's easy to see how the the discomfort i, I mean john i guess my other question there is just the amount of distress all that it, it's it's tough i'm not trying to say she didn't feel any of that but part of the the way to win these is to you need to show a lot of traumatic distress emotional i can't do this i can't work here does it can some of that be inflated is there a way for them to figure that out how much damages she really did suffer oh sure absolutely and and i mean it, it's not uncommon at all to um por portray the alleged damage in the worst possible light i mean right. that that's 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 certainly not uncommon and it's almost incumbent on the lawyer to you know, to 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 throw everything that 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 can possibly thrown be thrown against the wall, to have all that stuff thrown against the wall. So, understandable that that you know, oh, you know, she can't work, or she, you know, she has nightmares, or or uh, you know, she's had to 
you know, seek therapy or, you know, whatever it is, not that there's anything wrong with therapy, but uh, you get the point. It's, it, you know, you, you're, you're, you're certainly not going to leave anything out that, um, you know, you would have to turn around later on and say, oh, by the way, I forgot to say. Um, you, you have to I detail think- that there's suff- pain and suffering when in a civil case to, to win. Yeah. But even ahead, separate yeah. from that, though, if they have any evidence about the uh, one of the things that was said in the lawsuit was that allegedly the captain of the ship was paid off um, yes. by Sean Combs. If they can prove that and then connect it with her termination, that is very clearly wrongful termination. And that is a whole thing in itself. But that... as we point out, the, the captain's not on this loss, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Diddy's clearly the boss of the cap. They make a point of mentioning it in this whole thing of. Diddy is aiding and abetting because he's the one in charge. He chartered it. He's paying for the staff. He leased the boat. He's the captain now uh, is what's happening here. So, but yes, the captain, good point of making sure you add that too. the captain uh, basically told her, no, stop. Don't believe you forced her to work with him the next day. And uh, allegedly she says, took a tip from Diddy and Diddy just sort of quiet it. So, Serious accusations here. Uh, We'll see where this goes. That's our show for today. If you want to see the full legal documents, become a member over on Patreon. That is always the best place you can support us uh, because we get all the money. (laughs) Just say it. That's what it is. YouTube takes so much more, but Patreon takes less. It's a way to support us, and we got a lot of exclusives coming your way, including all of our replays are over there, so check it out. The full stream. Thanks again to John Witherspoon, attorney at law. Thanks for helping us get those documents. It's Kim. Thank you so much. Subscribe to her. She's got her coverage as well. And uh, if you want to watch the full replay, go do it. Or watch some of these. Hit the subscribe, hit the like, hit the bell. Stay tuned for more. Thank you guys so much, so much, because we will not be silenced.